Well, welcome back. We're now into looking at different types of uh, planning levels, and we're going to talk a little bit about uh, strategic plans and how they unfold within this uh, particular video. So there are three tiers of planning. Strategic plans is kind of your big top level plan of how are we going to uh, accomplish a particular uh, goal or objective, typically measured in years to accomplish. And then you have uh, tactical plans, that's your kind of intermediate level of plans. And then operational plans is your bottom level, something that's much smaller in terms of uh, focus and, uh, in turn, and much shorter in terms of the timeline uh, to implement. So each of these kind of nest within each other. You may have a strategic plan that consists of multiple tactical plans that help implement that strategic plan. And each of those tactical plans may have operational plans associated uh, with it. It really depends on the type of organization that you have and the culture within that organization uh, to the extent uh, that you're going to uh, use these uh, tiers. So what we're going to do now is uh, talk a bit about the, the uh, structure, basic structure of a strategic plan, and uh, then we'll go into a governance model for perhaps maintaining uh, that strategic plan. So let's start with looking at uh, what your structure of a strategic plan is going to look like. Look there, it's got eight components to it. You can read it, but you're going to have an introduction by some executive. Uh, preferably that executive is your CEO or is your uh, president. That's typically about one page long. You're then going to have an executive summary. That executive summary is uh, going to be one or two pages long. And for the vast majority of folks who are not going to read the entire document, uh, that you want to capture your intent within that document of what your strategic plan is trying to accomplish for the organization over a set period of time. Look there at number three, those topics we just talked about, or at least I just talked about, you've listened to. Uh, mission statement, vision statement, your values uh, statement are all going to uh, uh, be up there. Your mission and vision, of course, right up front. Your organization didn't pop out of nothingness. It's got a history. It's got a culture. It's got a profile. It's got a record. So you're going to capture that, not in you know 400 play pages of uh, flowing text, uh, you know, a kind of mini novel, but instead, probably a short section. You know, you might spend 10 pages on this, might, uh, but you want to capture where the organization was and, and, and kind of where it's going. All right, uh, strategic issues are those kind of big bucket things that you're trying to, uh, to address. Um, the uh, core values that we had uh, previously talked about are going to be here. And then uh, what you're going to do within those uh, strategic issues, hopefully uh, those uh, came out of you know, looking at what opportunities you had uh, within a organization, what weaknesses you had, uh, within that organization, what strengths you had within that organization, and um, what threats do you have to that organization. And so that's called a SWOT analysis, uh, S-W-O-T, strength, weakness, opportunity, threat. But those will help guide you know, what issues you have and, and, and the kind of direction that you want to take. And then within there, you'll come up with some goals and objectives. Goals are a higher level a concept, objectives, a lower level concept. And then you'll break those into managerial or operational goals and objectives associated with that. And oftentimes, you'll actually come up with metrics associated with these that you're going to measure uh, your accomplishment uh, of this strategic plan. As you're kind of working through this process and you're thinking about, well, how am I going to roll out a strategic plan? Generally, you want to have uh, some form of a governance structure around that in terms of uh, folks that you're going to bring in to help you work on that particular document. And so uh, what this next slide does is it talks about, about the ideal model uh, for governance, which is initiating, diagnosing, establishing, acting, and learning. It is a loop. In other words, it, you, you never really end. You, you're always continually working uh, through this process. You've got some stimulus for change out there uh, in, in the ideal model. That leads uh, to setting context for your plans. Why are you doing this? 
building some sponsorship both internal to the organization and external to the organization, chartering you know, a core group of constituents, a core infrastructure that's going to support that task, and it may be uh, leaders that are external, leaders that are internal, key administrative uh, folks, a project manager associated with this. You then need to characterize what your current and desired states are. Mm, sounds a little bit like a mission and vision statement there. Develop some recommendations that allow you to address those states. Once you've got those recommendations, you've got to prioritize them. Can't do everything. Still in the diagnosing and evaluating stage there. Start to develop some approaches to meet those priorities. You know, priority might be by a car. What car you get that you have to develop an approach for actually doing that. Uh, plan out your, your actions that you're going to have to take to actually accomplish uh, that approach. Create a, a actual solution uh, to that. Pilot or test it. You know, normally you don't do Big Bang where you do everything at once. So it, it, if it's a complex problem, you want to break it into phases and then solve it. And pilot, you know, and testing it is, is going to be important. You gather some feedback from your customers and your constituents of how effective that is, and you refine. Uh, that particular solution based on that pilot. And then after you've refined it, you actually have to implement it. Okay, And those are going to be components within that acting phase. Finally, nothing's perfect. Nothing fits perfectly forever. And so there's going to be some change in the environment, some change in your customers or constituents or technology. Uh, lots of factors could change. And what you want to be able to do is to analyze and validate what those changes are propose future actions, and then you start the loop all over again. So this ideal model for governance just sets uh, several phases that you kind of work through at the higher level. You're initiating, diagnosing, establishing, and then starting to act uh, within that space and learning within that space. And then each of these have sub-phases that are associated uh, with them in terms of implementing that strategic plan or really providing governance for any structure. All right, let's look at one last thing, and this kind of talks about within information security governance now, what those general roles are. And you can see there's some overlap there in terms of what those roles are. But if you start at the top of that chief executive officer, that CEO, uh, they're uh, accountable to the board. Everything that happens in that organization, everything that fails to happen in that organization, that CEO is ultimately going to be responsible. And it's going to be the CEO's job to promote that brand, to brief the board, to brief the customers, to brief the public, and to be involved uh, in knowing what's going on within the organization and engaging those external constituents uh, and bringing them in. Your chief security officer and chief information officer are going to be responsible for actually building the policy and procedures, the training programs, uh, the management and the leadership around responding to uh, security breaches. And then the responsibility for audit coordination, bringing them in and, and using them. And then again, parts of that uh, leadership and management of implementing, auditing, enforcing, assessing uh, actual compliance associated uh, with a security program. Your middle-level managers, they've got to do that enforcement as well. And they have to communicate the policy and the program and the training um, to all of their employees that are uh, working with them. And then finally, all of your staff and employees, they have to actually implement it. Okay, They have to actually do it, and then they have to report. And we talked about in that reporting, being able to detect what's normal and what's abnormal, and bringing it all back together. All right, well, we've kind of looked at, during this short video, uh, three different types of plans, a strategic plan, a tactical plan, and an operational plan. We've talked about the basic structure of a strategic plan and how that works. We've looked at the ideal model for governance and that framework uh, where we uh, looked at uh, initiating and, and diagnosing um, and just working through e establishing, of course, and, and acting uh, and learning uh, within that governance model to provide, uh, uh, to, to provide a structure for implementing those strategic plans and, and measuring and implementing solutions uh, in that space. And then finally, on this slide, we've looked at information security governance and we've looked at key roles of individuals 
uh, within that organization and, and what they're responsible for. All right, well, that's all for now. Next video, we're going to start to look at uh, phases within the uh, security software development life cycle and what that means. But that's all for now. Go, uh, uh, go use the restroom. Go take a break. Go get a, a fresh of fresh air. A breath of fresh air, much better. And come back and we'll uh, look at that software development life cycle. Thanks for now. Bye-bye.